Hi guys, so as the title, Cougar Classic finishing a build. So basically one of the lads at the club has asked me if I've got the time to finish his Cougar build for him. And uh, we're going to get this finished today. So this is pretty much how it came to me, how far he'd got. So he's pretty much done it all. There's not a great deal to finish off. Um, he's got the transmission in, obviously he's got the pro transmission in here. Uh, it just needed the diff tightening up and then the uh, other cover putting on. So we're just finishing putting this together now. Uh, got the belt tension set, so we'll get this screwed up. Uh, the only thing I like to add on, just on the back, bit of glazing tape just around there, just literally just where it's going to sit on the bottom in here. So it just gives a nice seal around there. Uh, if you race on carpet, it's probably not too much of an issue, but at our track where he's probably going to be running this most of its life, uh, we run on grass, good old proper grass surface. So I've noticed on some of the Cougars that I've run, you can get a little bit of grit, a little bit of grass in there. Um, but yeah, other than that, it just helps keep a bit of the muck out. He's built the shocks up. So I will pull him apart just to make sure that he's got the clips on the right way around because they have a flat side and a rounded side. Um, but I'm also going to try something with the stock pistons because you can't get hold of the Teflon pistons from Mizum anymore. So we're going to add a one mil hole just to the uh, existing pistons and uh, see if that helps out anything I'll get those ball cups all the way down so yeah so just on here basically I've got small drill bits so we'll add a one mil hole um, if you're going to add a hole to your pistons I'd always recommend doing it on the actual built shaft so Get your e-clip on because what i've done before in the past is i've drilled them out put the e-clip on and then the e-clip will actually cover a little bit of the hole and obviously you're not getting the full effect of it then um but yeah i'll uh crack on with the build i won't show you the whole build obviously there's loads of these out here but um when we come to some little bits that People find it a little bit tricky. Up to this point now on the build, there's nothing that's of any real difficulty. Um, I'll go through the drive shafts again. I've got it on my, my Pro Cat build. Um, what I do need to do is check out the rear arms, obviously. That one and that one, they're not totally free. This one's not too bad. Generally, what I found is if you over tighten up the two screws, this one and that one, then it just clamps down on this a little bit too much. So I'll um, spend a little bit of time trying to get these back arms a bit freer and then uh, we'll jump back onto the video. Right, got the back arms. They're nice and free now. So when I went through the build, um, checked over everything. Uh, one thing on your bulk up ends here, basically you have a, like a long Allen bolt that goes through and then the actual cut bit screws on. A um, little bit of thread lock on them. Uh, the one that I built when they first come out and I've been racing a while now, these have a habit of coming off. I've had a couple come off now. So just a little bit of thread lock put them on, nip them up, and then they're not going to come out again. And we have one little upgrade. So front and rear shock towers from Pucker Parts. Um, I've had a few of these Pucker Parts bits on some of my cars before. Um, the front shock tower is basically the big thing on here. So the original shock tower that comes with it, uh, I've... I've only ever broken one in my lifetime, but I know a few people have mentioned that they've actually broken one and it isn't the thickest thing out there. 
the carbon fiber one that Schumacher do. Again, not a massive thick thing. Check out that from Pucker Parts. I mean, that is four mil thick. Um, I don't know how thick the original Schumacher one is. I do have one somewhere, but I've taken it off to replace with the LR Prod carbon front and rear shock towers. Um, so we'll be getting it built up with these and we'll see how we go. All right, Twiglet. Just random cat. Come on, busy here. So get you out of the way. Come here. Come on. Sorry about that. So yeah, so the front and rear shock towers are nice thick units. So the rear one is about the same thickness as the one that comes on, um, the upgraded one that comes on it, I think. Um, and again, you need the operated or the fixed rear wing mount to go on there. But yeah, these are nice and thick. So it won't be breaking them in a hurry at least anyway. So I think we're ready to crack on with the build now. And uh, I won't show you the whole build, like I said. I'll come through on the shocks, go through the shocks, let you know what's going on. And then when it comes to these, I know a lot of people struggle with these. So I'll give you my little tip for putting them together again. It's already on my ProCat build. Uh, luckily, you've only got four to do on a Cougar. So I'll crack on and catch you in a bit. Right, go through the drive shafts again. So I always have a quick look at these, make sure that there's not an excess amount of flash on there if there is Let's give it a little clean up they sometimes have a, a sharp bit sticking up as well so there's not a lot on that one and then get your crucifix so don't forget the nut in the end there i've done it loads of times but Easiest way I found to get them in. Long screw up in there. Line it up. And then just pull it in. So, like I said on the Pro Cap build, basically, it's that has to go in there. And it all, it's easy if you have it all just lined up all in one. So basically just get it sort of into the hole a little bit. I don't know if it's actually going to show up on there. And then hold that, get a good firm grip on that and just give it a little wiggle, a little click. That's it in, that's it done. Then just grab your little tool. I don't know where I've put it. Got another one in here. then all you're doing basically is just pushing that down. So going straight down on that. So put your finger behind there. Cause if you're not pushing, if you're pushing against it and you've got nothing supporting that, you could snap one of these off. They do bend a little bit, but you can push them too far. All you do is just push straight down up into there until it's home and that's it. That's still lined up pretty nicely there. So we can just give it a little wiggle and then she's in. Get rid of the tool now, we don't need that. I put my thumb on the back there, basically that ain't gonna be able to go that way because otherwise you're trying to get that in there. It just ain't gonna happen. So thumb on there so it can't move. And again, just line that up. Get it sort of into the hole a little bit. Don't know how well he's actually showing up. And then just push. Little clip. That's in there now. 
push all the way home and then clip it in nice and easy so with your tie rods obviously unlike if you only have built tammy is basically with these once these are on you can actually just adjust that turnbuckle that'll either lengthen it or shorten it because you've got a reverse thread on one side and your little tool again comes in handy on these so if you just get that started grab your little tool if you've got a little four mil wrench that will just fit on there i think i think the actual size is about 3.9 but all you're doing just helping to hold it that side of the tool can actually be used so once you start winding it on a little tool in there and wind it on you don't have to i like to wind it all the way in and then wind it back out basically it's just as you're going to adjust it on the car if you do need to go in it just makes it a little bit harder so all the way in take it out slightly and then just repeat on the other side right getting the shocks together so i've added a little 1.1 mil hole to the original pistons because i've got none of the teflon ones from a zoom and they don't seem to be available uh when you're putting the shock together if you put the little o-ring on and then just put some oil on top i just put 100 weight on just helps them go in a bit easier right Cougar Classic wig mount, a lot of people, this, they really don't like, and I'm not a fan of it. I personally don't run this on any of the cars that I'm going to have out running. But the easiest way I've found to do it is, if you pinch that, it's going to naturally want to do that, fold up in. So I use that to your advantage. So one of those edges, feed it through so that the hole is going that way. And then the back end has almost gone into the right place. And then I just get a little pair of tweezers, push them through. And if you pull them back, you can see that that is in there. Get on the little plastic cap. There's probably someone out there that's got a really simpler way of doing it than mine, but I like my way. And then once it's lined up, again, just gently push them through. I can just see the tip coming out of the other side. And then the hardest part is actually getting this thing in. You don't need to push it all the way in. Once that's literally just up in line with the hole. And obviously it's pushed out. So we can just pull it back out ever so slightly. Or all the way, doesn't really matter. And just push it back in. That's through. Make sure that it has gone under and that's it succeeded so yeah they are tricky but if you just take your time go through it logically just make sure that obviously the pin got got away through because if that moves 
that's why I put go through the little tweezers, make sure that it is actually going to go through because if it's not going to go through, you end up fighting it and then uh, you end up throwing it across the living room and going out and buying the fixed wing mount, which if you're going to run your car, I'd probably run with the fixed wing mount anyway. These rubbers, if you're going to display a car, you'll probably find out about, about eight months, maybe a year, that they start to degrade and then obviously when the car's sat there, push the wing down these have literally sort of like dried out and, and they snap but if you're running the car they do actually work great in protecting your wing but i just go for all the um, fixed ones but i'll get this car finished up and then uh, we'll jump back and i'll let you see it in its full glory right so she's all finished and yeah hopefully you find some of those tips helpful let me know if you do if you don't help let me know um so like say the shop pistons i've added a 1.1 mil hole to them um i think you can't get hold of the Mazoom teflon pistons anymore if you can get hold of them they are a really good upgrade you can get extra holes so shock oil wise i've put 450 up front 350 at the back the front feels fine once you've got a bit of weight in there obviously there's no electrics it should be fine the back feels a little bit springy i think it, i think it wants some slightly softer springs on the back um once he's running the car we can uh, go through and see what it all needs um battery position i've built it with the battery in the forward position whether it'll want to move it to the back i don't know um like i say we'll just have to see how the car goes i don't know if he's running low center of gravity batteries i don't know what he's got so we may have to change the battery mounts but that's not a big issue but yeah that's it all done um if you do go for the pucker parts front shock towers bear in mind that because they are four mil as opposed to two mil the allen key um the the allen screw going through is it won't be long enough so basically i've added a 25 mil going through i've put i think it's a two mil washer behind and with that on the nuts are literally just on the end there so you probably could even just get away with no washer on but then you would have a little bit of screw thread sticking out on the front there um but yeah she's gone all together nicely um i've taken the rear spaces out of the back shock so we've got the full droop um like i say we race on grass and we can always put them back in if if need be it's no big job especially if we've got to change the shock oil might have to change it with um, a spring change but yeah it's all done um rear shock mount, um rear wing mount obviously you need the other item i can't remember what, what the part number is but it's what i've got on the on the pro cat so you lose the flexible mount on the back um but that's it uh so yeah please like and subscribe write in the comments what you think um if you need any help if there's anything that you're not too sure of with schumacher's i know they can be a little bit fiddly um i'm not the ultimate expert there's people out there that know a lot more than me but hopefully i can pass on some tips down to you guys um so that's it for the cougar Cheers guys.